I'm back home. It's like, uh, it's like the prodigal son coming home and received by his father so warmly. Um, this church is my church. I used to enjoy coming here. I used to enjoy meeting all my friends here. Uh, I see the professor's elder brother, brother is here, still singing, still doing his job well. And I'm so glad to be invited. Um, thank you, um, Elder Calvin, for inviting us here. May God richly bless you as you continue to lead this wonderful church. This is a beautiful church, well constructed. I can remember those old days Amen. when there was, the, there was this pastor as pastoring this church. I don't know what church. Congregational. Congregational. Very delightful man. When it was full here, we had parking here. And uh, he always uh, opened up uh, his gates to receive us to go and park there. Wonderful man. I don't know whether he's still here. I doubt it. Uh, he was such a marvelous man. And uh, today I'm here. I'm here to discuss with you um, using a title taken from the lips of Jesus. You cannot serve two masters. You may try, but I'm telling you, you will never succeed. You'll never be able to. Yes, he was a dirty old tramp. As he went down the street, socks, his socks poked through the holes of his shoes. His trousers were patched. And the elbows, of course, had to stick out of his sleeves on his disheveled, but once might have been a smart sports coat. Strings served for button. His head was battered and dirty. Weeks of beard clung muttered to his chin. He was a dirty old tramp. Tobacco stains were in the corners of his mouth. He hadn't had a bath for quite a long time. And down the street he went leaning on a stick. You know when you talk about leaning on a stick, I remember yesterday, uh, Silke, my wife, had a birthday on the third of this month and so our eldest daughter and um, uh, grandson invited us and his son, our son-in-law invited us out and I thought, they didn't tell me what was ha going to happen. I thought we were going to go to a restaurant. And so I went there. Um, I didn't eat much. I just had fr fruit, knowing that uh, we'll enjoy ourselves uh, later. Little did I know what was planned for us. Uh, we went to a sands park and uh, oh wow, Prof, what a walk. <laughs> ah, what a walk. And uh, we walked and walked and I kept asking, when are we going to get uh, to the restaurant? And uh, my daughter said, you know, you see that tree there? We're going to turn, we're going to turn there, to turn right there, and the restaurant is down there. And so I walked and walked 
and we went past the tree. <laughs> and at the tree, I looked, I said, no, man. Uh, this restaurant is not going to happen. So I looked for a stick. And I found a nice, big, firm stick. And, uh, you know, I'm no longer so young. So I, I used the stick uh, to, to, to walk. And, and my grandson was with me. And he was walking with me. He said, Grandpa, man, walk. We're going to get there. And so we walked and walked. We walked up. It, was, it looked like it was going to be an incline all the way. Uh, until finally we got to a place where we were going to go down. Oh, happy I was. Uh, and I walked brisk, briskly down, the, down, downwards. And my daughter said, be careful. The stones here uh, are slippery. So don't, 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 don't be so hasty. So we got to a place where it was nice and, and clear. So my wife and I started running and running as old people. Uh, we ran and ran and ran. And uh, of course, we got tired so quickly. Then we got to a place where there were uh, 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 the, the place. I didn't notice that there were uh, small stones. So I was walking briskly. And oops. I fell on my back. <laughs> and uh, my, my, my grandson and my daughter, my wife, and my stick, they kept wanting the stick to take the stick. I said, leave the stick alone. Uh, so the stick was a help. So I got up and we walked again. We walked and walked and we got to the bridge. And I say, what are we doing? When are we getting to the restaurant? What are we doing on the... On the... And eventually we got to the restaurant. And they had a big note at the restaurant. The restaurant is full. Uh, try something, try later. And I was tired. I was tired with my stick on. And my daughter went to speak inside. And they allowed us to come inside. And I said to myself, oh, Lord, amen. Thank you. Thank you. So we enjoyed the lunch I was looking forward to. Uh, and so this old tramp was leaning on his own stick, not on mine. I've kept that stick. I'm going to make it, I cut it nicely because I think it's going to be good for me uh, in the future. Uh, so, as he walked on the stick with his stick on, the small boys uh, jeering and throwing stones at him, every decent citizen of the town bypassing this man on the other side of the road. He was a dirty old tramp. Chased by the dogs, despised by most. He was a dirty old tramp. Suddenly, a limousine pulled up, driven by the richest men in the, in the city. And he stopped and he called out to this tramp. And he said to him, would you like a new set of clothes, a house that's all, that is your own, and perhaps a car that you can drive around in? What about a beautiful garden? If so, jump in. I'll help you achieve those aims. Well, what would you have done 
if you were that dirty old tramp. His heart jumped. That's what he'd been wanting all his life. The awful, something like this, riches. At least a decent set of clothes and the rest of that went with a comfortable way of life. And off they sped to the finest district, to the finest district in the town, and to the finest house in the entire district. Here we are, said the host. I'll do all and more that I've promised for you. My servants here will fix you up. But I must leave now, just obey them as they carry out my instructions. And so the master left the old uh, tramp in his house. And while he was standing there, a smiling young man came bustling up to the old tramp and said to him, my master has told me to do, to do the best for you. Follow me. Now, the old tramp was a very peculiar sort of a bloke. A mere servant telling me to follow him up, giving me the orders. He almost refused. And there was resentment in his mind. Uh, the first thing we will do, said the servant, you'll have to have a bath, of course. A bath? Horror was apparent. Terror sprung into his soul. Fear. You see, he hadn't had a bath for years. This will mean, of course, said the servant, taking off your coat. You mean I've got to take uh, this coat off? I've worn it for years. That's absurd. I can't dispense with my beautiful coat. That may well be so. But if you want the fine clothes that my master has promised, you'll have to get rid of your old coat. And so muttering discontently, this dirty old tramp decided, thought about it, and he decided, to take off his precious coat. Of course your hat will have to come off. My hat? My hat? This precious ornament. I've worn it for seven years. It's kept the rain off during winter and kept the sun off in the summer. I can't dispense with my beautiful hat. The servant said, well, if you are going to want the new set of clothes I'm going, uh, you're going to need from my master, you're going to take off your shoes. The tramp, uh, muttering discount, was disgusted. Oh no, I'm not taking my shoes off. Okay, they've got a few holes in them. But I know when each of them wore through. I've been with them for thousands of kilometers. I've, I've worn his uh, shoes. Well, the tramp thought it through and finally and resignedly took off his precious pair of shoes with all the holes in them. Good, said the servant. You might as well take off the rest of your rags and then you can have a bath. My rags? You mean my clothes, my precious, precious clothes and you're calling them Rags. This dirty old tramp said, 
No, I'm going to call the master to the house. He wouldn't expect me to take off my lovely possession. And you call them rags. He'd give me the new clothes on top of my old ones. I want to see the old, uh, the master. The servant said firmly, I'm only obeying my instructions. The master said, if you, if you want the new clothes, you're going to take the old ones off if you refuse. Well, I'm afraid there's nothing we can do. The opportunity may not come again. There was finality in the servant's voice. Well, you might say, what a silly old fellow. Fancy trying to hang, hang on to his old clothes when he had the offer of new clothes. I know I would trade in my old clothes for new ones, wouldn't you? And yet something, sometimes we, we seem to hang on to our old rag, ragged uh, rags, our old rags of ideas, our old rags of ways and things we do to, this, to somebody who has offered us a new sets of clothes, a new set of ideals, a new set of living. We seem to hang on to our old rag, rags, just like the dirty old tramp. We want God on our terms and not on the terms that he has offered us. In other words, we are not prepared to believe what Jesus proposed. The old tramp obviously did not appreciate the value of the proposition made to him. He didn't appreciate the love and the concern that obviously the old, the red, <coughs> rich man had for that specimen of humanity. And he chose to throw it away and say, and we say today, what a silly old fellow. You know, no man can serve two masters. No man can wear two sets of clothes at the same time. You might find some people who try, but they don't do it as a general rule. They don't do it successfully. I don't know whether you know <clears throat> and have, say, have, have heard the song sung by Bob, Bob Dylan. Uh, now, I'm not a great devotee of the pop scene. There are songs that sound nice, but one suspects the psychology of the emphasis behind them. But it might interest you to know that Bob Dylan became a Christian. He was living with some girl, and she became a Christian, and and so moved out as good girls do. And she changed her life and lifestyle altogether. This so amazed Bob Dylan, so that he wanted to investigate for himself. Bob had been brought up as a Jew. His real name was Robert Zimmerman. And so the Holy Spirit must have spoken with, with Bob because he also changed his ways. Of course, he continued to make records and the one he produced had the following lyrics. You may be the ambassador of England or you may be the ambassador of France. You may like to gamble, you may like to dance, you may be the heavyweight champion of the world, but you're going to have to serve somebody. You're going to have to serve somebody. It may be the devil or it may be the Lord, but you are going to have to serve somebody. And so he went through a whole load of various things. You may be a state trooper, or you may be a young Turk, you may be the head of some big TV network, 
or you may be rich, or you may be poor. You may be blind, you may be lame, you may be living in another country under another name. But um, my friend, you are going to have to serve somebody. Yes, indeed, you are going to have to serve somebody. It may be the devil or it may be the Lord, but you're going to have to serve somebody. The last track of this song is entitled, When He Returns. And as you all know, that's referring to the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. We can make up who we're going to serve. It may be the devil or it may be the Lord. Some people chose the devil. Others, like you and me, choose the Lord. The Bible says no man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Having two masters is not like working two jobs. Jesus is the master and saves human beings from the bondage of sin. But remember, no slave can serve two masters. Jesus states that serving two masters is a simple impossibility. If you think you are successfully serving two masters, you are deceiving yourself. It can't be done. The ancient Israel struggled with idolatry. They thought they could worship the Lord God and Baal. God constantly reminded them that to worship Baal was to forsake the Lord. To be loyal to one is to despise the other. It can you cannot serve God and mammon. You can't serve your money. You, you let your money serve the Lord and it will save you. Amen. You cannot serve God and mammon. Yes. <coughs> Sorry. You cannot serve two masters. If you will sacrifice for the sake of money, you will not sacrifice. You will sacrifice for the sake of Jesus Christ. Don't deceive yourself. Money is God's money. We must just remember we don't have to be rich to serve God. The poor can be just as greedy and covetous as the rich. You see, human beings are naturally bent. We can't decide for ourselves all the time what's right and what's wrong. I had a story of John, a minister in Australia who used to be in the rock scene, and he wrote an open letter to his friend. His friend's name was Mick. And he wrote to his friend Mick, and he said to him, from the outside, outside looking in, youthful is mainly physical, body dominates the mental, physical, and spiritual. It must be felt by the five senses. Touch, taste, smell, see, and hear. It's the face of music. Music and moods. Now John knew this. He was a, a, a dynamic person who converted and took his dynamism to the gospel. And so he continued to, to write to Mick and he said to him, heavy music is acid rock. 
rock music and rock rhythm and blues are melted together. Mick, my friend, it's the stuff of the underground culture. I wrote much of it. <coughs> the instruments are made of wood, linen, glue, and steel, and stacks of electricity. They are neutral. They are innocent until they are picked up. Then they become manipulated mediums of the mind, power, and mirrors of the player's mentality. I've experienced the weird feeling of the supernatural powers running through my fingers, down the stream, swelling through the transistors, belting out in the dingy atmosphere, the black lit figures bent just as I wanted them to bend. Heavy electric vibrations running from my mind to theirs. I was in control, Nick, and they were out of it. They were like puppets, dazzled, distorted, and you stand on the platform with your electric medium, and your voice grates and groans as you turn them on. You must turn them on because you have to manipulate it, manipulate them because of your ego. Mick, ego is pride. Any musical performance can often is ego. Do I relate, Mick? Do you hear me? Do the bells come on strong? Look, mate, I'm not proud of my, my history. And then he says, Jesus died deeper than the lowest depth, down to the very death. Yes, we cannot save two masters. As Jesus pointed out, we end up hating one and loving the others. At times, one will be more important than the other. And anything is more important than God, then we put that thing above the Lord. My friends, God is a jealous God. And he does not share his glory with anyone. God says, we belong to him. The Lord is jealous for his own good. Not for his own good, but he is jealous rather for our good. But this commandment I give to them, obey my voice and I will be your God and you shall be my people. Walk in all the way that I command you, that I may be with you. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandment. Oh, my friends, I call on you to come to the Lord. I call on you to save the Master. I call on you to bow down to the Lord. You will experience freedom you have never experienced before. You will have joy, happiness for the rest of your life. You cannot save two masters. You either save the Lord or you save the devil. Amen.